Hey, more new shells. So, I've got, if you couldn't tell from the uh, aptly named title of this video, some brand new IPS Ready Game Boy Advance SP shells. And, uh, oh, get that out of here. So, what makes these different compared to the last versions of the shell? These. All these panels should be the same as all the previous versions of the shell. What's different is this top bit. So if you can't tell from the uh, outside here, uh, how you have that normal support on the side here, but then on this side, just trim nice and flush. That's the idea. So let me grab my uh, other SP here. So you can see, I've, I've done quite a few mods with this thing, but on the normal IPS installs, you have to end up trimming this side, and since this wasn't an IPS-ready shell, you could see all my trims from the outside. Granted, this is one of the first trims I've done. I've since learned a much better way of uh, doing this so that I don't mess it up nearly as bad, and I just haven't had the chance to redo this one yet. But anyway, nice, it's flush. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and check this shell out because while these panels are still the same, um, there's nothing, there's no new features about them. This is still a new mold compared to the uh, old versions of the shell. Uh, so without further ado, I guess let's go ahead and get started. Uh, on my previous, one sec. On my previous shell review videos, um, I've ended up, you know, giving you my first initial impressions of the shell, fucking off, going to go do a build, and then coming back and giving you my uh, my my final thoughts on it. Uh, in this particular case, I'm just going to do the full build in this video because, um, well, there's really no reason to split it up. The only reason I was splitting up the other videos was because I had a, uh, a new build in mind that I wanted to do a video on, but I've already done the video for the shell that, or for the kit we're putting in here. Unfortunately, it means I have to take apart one of my cool Game Boys, but that's okay. I'll, I'll probably end up putting this one back together at some point. Um, but as far as initial impressions go, I mean, it feels pretty much the same as the other kits we've had. Uh, I do know that there is a, uh, slightly new feature to this shell compared to the old one, old ones, and that is the membranes for the buttons are glow-in-the-dark. Uh, how these feel compared to OEM membranes, I don't know. Probably not great, like usual, but at least they look cool, I guess. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get on with the build. So unfortunately, I am going to have to completely break this Game Boy down, but that's okay. Shouldn't be too difficult. Fully assembled, fully working. What we need a screwdriver, and I think that's the right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay. to a wonderful start, don't you think? There we go. So I'll try and talk through what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Um, of course, this is nothing I haven't done before, but Hey, maybe you haven't seen all my other videos. I mean, I've seen a few of them, and I don't blame you. <laughs> but anyway, let's go ahead and pull the bottom panel off. The battery cover comes off with a small JIS screwdriver. In my particular case, I'm using the J00. JIS is not Phillips. They're very similar. They look very similar. In a lot of cases, you can use one one driver in place of the other, but not all cases. 
your life will go so much smoother if you use a JIS driver instead of trying to make a Phillips work. To get the bottom panel off, there are six tri-point screws, four long ones in each corner, two short ones, one in the battery compartment, one in the uh, cart slot area. Oh, I should have turned on my soldering iron, I forgot about this. Um, normally, you just remove those three JIS screws and then you can lift it up and desolder the uh, ribbon, or desolder, disconnect the ribbon. But in my particular case, my ribbon is soldered. Um, I'm going to open this to give me just a little bit more ribbon to work with. I can flip that up like that. Do this with the wrong hand. And that's it. Both of these release, just slide them up towards the uh, top of the shell and then the ribbon will release. I'm going to leave this wire here because I'm going to be reassembling this, but uh, that's pretty much it, just that aside. Once you've got that out, might as well dump out all the buttons and the speakers and shit before you spill them everywhere. So sometimes you need to transfer over your LED light pipes. I don't think this is one of those cases, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that installed. And then we need to remove the JIS screw. This is a long one, and that holds the hinge cover on. And now we need to get these rubber covers off. On an OEM shell, these are much more difficult to get off because there's adhesive holding them as well. But the process is largely the same. Just take like a plastic smudge or something, jam it between the, uh, the rubber bit and the shell, and then just try and work your way around the periphery until you get under it. But Because there's no adhesive, these ones come out quite a bit easier. And then five more screws and we're done. On AGS 101 consoles, that is backlit from the factory, I've seen these always as um, tri-wing screws, or excuse me, as JIS screws. On 001s, which is what this console was, these have always been tri-point screws. Um, of course, it, it's not that important just, I don't know, weird thing I've noticed. But anyway, this console is using all aftermarket screws, so it's not like this would adhere to any of those rules. And this should come off. Usually the screen ends up sticking to the back, and that's exactly what it did here. And from here, normally we would pop out the hinges to salvage and use in our new shell, but we can't do that for one reason. I'm not going to do it for two reasons, but we can't do it for one reason. Um, I'll get into that a little bit more in a moment when I'm putting together the new shell, but long story short, the hinges I used in this shell won't work in the new shell. Not easily. Let's unstick that. Okay, good. I'm glad I stuck those to the glass because now I don't have to deal with the... Uh, moving them around. So you can see when I installed it in this shell I had to trim this down. But if we want to install it in this shell, it just drops right in there. And the cover goes right on. Zero trimming necessary. Absolutely none. Alright, but before we put this together, let's uh Let's take a look. Let's let's do a little bit of experimentation. Experimentation's always good. Shits and giggles. Here's an AGS001 screen. 
That seems to fit absolutely fine. That's not moving around or anything. These screens are almost always located by the lens within the shell. So as long as the screen is lined up with the lens, then it's not going to move around. It's not going to look bad or anything. Um, see, it moves around a little bit, but because of the foam on the back, that presses down when this is seated. It's the perfect thickness. Works great. There are some other options, like, oopsie doodle. If you wanted to use a funny blanket, let's try that. I forgot to get that handy, but I think that's this. I have yet to actually install this in anything. Don't, don't yell at me. <laughs> but that should drop right in, just like that. And indeed it does, centers nicely seats fully flush. I know I didn't remove the plastic wrap. I'm not going to remove the plastic wrap. And then this would go in there like that, curl up and it would go through just fine. This isn't going to close with that ribbon in the way. I would have to actually uh, install the proper kit. Oh, we can, we can make it work. But without the actual ribbon in there, the LCD itself does fit perfectly fine. It looks like you can press it down in the corner though. So there's a bit of a gap on the bottom. It seems fine, not going anywhere on the bottom. But these kits do come with foam for installing on the back of the screen that you're supposed to use. But this is only for the funny plane kit. If you're using the one chip kit, which is these guys with the PCB, if they come with foam, you're not supposed to use the foam. It's only funny plane. But it seems to fit just fine. Now, I don't have an AGS 101 screen handy for testing. Um, I mean, I guess I do console right here, but I'd have to take it apart. Um, however, I do know that the AGS 101 screens are basically the same size as the 001 screens, which is what we just tested, except that they're a little bit thinner, so they have some thicker foam on the back for spacing, but what I have here it's an AGS-001 screen with no foam on the back. We'll just, we'll use this as our 101 stand-in. They're still located by the lens. The IPS lenses tend to fit quite a bit better. And that's in there, and it doesn't even, like I can't push it back, even though there's no foam cushioning it. It still seats nicely maybe on this top right oh on this bottom jeez i swear i know my right from my left on the bottom left here you can see it pushes down a little bit but this is where you see that support's been removed so unfortunately it looks like on the corner you're going to get that if you have the foam from the original screen I mean, don't get rid of it. You're, you're going to run into problems once you start modifying it. But the AGS 101 screen should have foam on the back of it too, assuming you're reshelling your 101. Just keep it there, and it'll space just fine. All right. I think that covers all of the kits, actually. There is one more... Um, no, let me grab it. Why not? What harm can there be in that? So I have this, which isn't an original 101 screen, but peel that off. Go on a lens just like that, almost. 
have it slightly askew. I think it should still be fine though. Oh, go in there. And that would go on there. That's supposed to be twisted up, but it seems fine where it is, so I'm not going to fight it. Uh, same issue, bottom left corner. There's a gap, but all the other corners, perfectly fine. This is the lens that actually came with the shell, by the way. It's not great. Um, of course, there's plastic on it that I still got to remove, but haven't. Uh, let me grab, what did I do with it? How did I lose it? I just had it. Hang on. I wanted to grab an uh, original screen so we can compare the lenses. You can see the new lens, the plastic is darker or the color is darker. This is supposed to be a dark gray, but it is a slightly different darker gray. And the logo itself, it just doesn't look great. I mean, you can, you can be your own judge there if you like that, but it's not great. I don't really like it, and I'm not really surprised because it's basically the same stuff we've seen before from other aftermarket lenses, but... It is what it is. So I'm not gonna remove that. I'm just gonna leave it there for now because I will worry about it later. Let's go ahead and get this thing assembled. Um, let's start with the hinges so I can discuss the problem I alluded to earlier. Now I have done a video on this, but I don't, I don't assume everyone watches all of my videos, so I'll go over it again. Long story short, there are two different styles of hinge and two different styles of the hinge covers that go over the hinges. So on this one, let's double check, see what we have. On this one, oh, you know what? Actually, this might work. So let me, let me explain. With these hinge covers, there's these two little inner chambers in there. On the clear shells and on OEM shells, this second chamber is filled in. This looks like something new to these aftermarket shells. Um, on the other like opaque, opaque aftermarket shells, like this silver one that I sourced, both of these chambers are fully open. Now let's take a look at some hinges and where are my tweezers? So we can take a look here at this is, this is what an OEM hinge looks like. This is a right hinge, I believe. Nope, this is the left hinge, I'm sorry. The, uh, you can tell because it has the black clips, but this is OEM and you see it's nice and flush on the top there. Whereas with an aftermarket hinge, you have this rivet here that sticks out quite significantly. Let's see if this works with an aftermarket hinge. It inserts partially, but it doesn't fully fully seat whereas on that one it goes all the way on so yeah we'll have to use OEM hinges it's kind of what I expected and I have aftermarket hinges in this one but all you want one black one one white one I have panda hinges they're both opposites of each other the one with the black clips goes on the left the one with the white clips goes on the right Insert, you just got to open the shell to its normal open position and we'll just click right in. And there we go. Nice and smooth. Drop my screen kit in. Put these up. 
out of my way. And this is looking good real quick. Let's get these screws in. Should I use the new screws? Let's use the new screws. Why not? Maybe there's something new and special in here. Or maybe there's something absolutely terrible. Either way, it'll be a learning experience. Oh, that's interesting. It comes with two sets of pads. So we have these, uh, these blue ones, and then I guess these ones are glow-in-the-dark. Find out in a minute. Set those up by my light. So there's already a screw in the battery cover. So stand by just a moment while I sort these. Let's see what we have. It looks like these are our three motherboard screws. That is screen, 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 five. Bottom shell, bottom shell, that's probably for the hinge, and the rest of those are for the bottom shell. All right. So yeah, these look like the exact same screws I literally just took out of the other shell. And quite frankly, they probably are. So putting this back together, again, five short screws. Tri point for 001s or JIS for 101s. Of course, you can swap them out if you want. That's just what, the, uh, what they come with from the factory. And they're nice. The corners aren't backing out or anything. Oh. Okay. Oh, maybe that was because I don't actually have this secured and it was just popping into place. Ooh, that was kind of sketchy. All right. Now we have one long JIS screw for the hinge cover. actually screw this all the way down this time. I didn't do that on that console and I didn't want to take it apart again to fix it. <laughs> I mean it's kind of moot now but all right should we use the black buttons or the buttons it comes with? I want to use the black buttons. I don't know why I'm asking I mean not only are you guys not going to answer me but I already made up my mind anyway. By the time you guys do see this video, I'm probably going to have taken this thing apart anyway. I will use the new pads, though. We'll try those out. SP buttons are actually, whoops, are actually really nice in that as long as you have good pads, it really doesn't make too big of a difference. Most of the buttons are fine. So... These buttons were fine with the OEM pads that I was using, so we'll see how they work with these glow-in-the-dark ones. Uh, oh, we need a motherboard now. Go ahead and get 
this reconnected. And hold that like that. Every time I do this, I try something new and it never works. <laughs> Set that down. Try not melting a hole in this brand new shell. There we go. And that's it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay. To make sure the wire wasn't going to rub on anything. All the buttons are in place. I remembered the speaker, there's LED light pipes, so let's go ahead and put in the three JIS short screws. Short, these are the shortest screws in the package. If you install any other screw, you are going to have a bad time. I also highly recommend reusing your original screws. In my case, that doesn't make sense because my original screws are just more aftermarket screws, but for anything else, original screws. All right. Where's, oh, here it is. Oh, another option would have been white buttons. I could have gone with white buttons. I didn't even think about that. Oh, well, too late. Easy peasy, do not forget the square nut. Without the square nut, you will not be able to reinstall your battery cover. And two things, this is directional. So if we look at it, you can see, no you can't because that's gone. Right, I haven't a clue where that went. So we will be using the square nut from my old shell. <laughs> uh, Jesus. Anyway. <laughs> So as you can see, this side is perfectly flat, whereas this side has a slight bevel to the screw input. This side you want facing down. You want the flat side facing towards the inside of the shell. The reason for this is, I mean, I suppose it doesn't make a huge difference, but if you try it the other way, your screw isn't going to insert very easily. It'll go eventually, just have a hard time with it. I cannot get this thing in flat. is these things they have to go in perfectly straight or they won't go in at all. Oh, there we go. All right. Make sure the console's switched off. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can leave it switched on. Just make sure both switches are in the same position. Flip it over. 
drop that down. You can flip it over again and let's install the last screws. The four long ones go in the four corners. Should only have six screws left at this point. We just installed four of them. It's hard to feel when these bottom out because on a brand new shell, you are cutting the threads for the first time by screwing these in. short ones it might be within your best interest to leave these ones out if you are not reusing your screws but we'll see what happens once I get this one installed okay actually it looks like we're gonna be fine on some of the other shells, some of the screws they come with, this one will not sit flush. And while that's not a huge issue in and of itself, you will end up scratch oh, this. This one's perfectly fine, of course. Uh, but some carts you'll end up get scratching up on that screw. And that's not something you want. Ooh, that scared me for a moment. Drop my thingies. I forgot those were up there. Yeah, they look glow in the dark to me. how these membranes feel um, I mean they're perfectly serviceable but I feel like the button has entirely too much travel this is for a B up down left right start and select are fine shoulder buttons are unchanged brightness buttons fine I guess I mean, it's not like you press that often Feels fine. This shell might actually be very nice for uh, reshelling my existing console, which. Oh, there it is. Because I gotta reshell this one. Unfortunately, with the old shells, there seems to be this. Uh, predisposition towards cracking so my hinges are totally destroyed on this it wasn't even anything I did they just cracked um, like I will fully ex accept the blame for the crack right here in this top shell but I did nothing with these hinges and they're all cracked um, it's still mostly working but obviously it needs some help so I'm thinking this console might end up in here in this shell eventually maybe but uh I don't know it's looking pretty good I'm digging it let's see the uh, sticker it comes with so I got two stickers because I got two shells and interestingly enough they are printing different serial numbers on the stickers 
kind of expected uh, every sticker to have the same serial. So that's that's nice, I guess. These are probably existing serials, though, so I don't know how nice it is. And of course, you can leave the sticker off if you want. Let's see how well it fits. Oh, I got it a little bit crooked. That's okay. Fits well enough. Actually fits into the cutout, which is more than I can say for some of the consoles. Oh, and the Nintendo logo. should be actually I don't think it is on this one normally on these emblems there's a plastic film that you have to remove but I guess that I guess there wasn't on this one no there definitely is there it is okay I was wondering how I uh, I made that mark. There we go. Doesn't look great, but it's all right. Compared to an OEM. Is that OEM? That's an aftermarket shell. That's OEM. I can't even tell anymore. Yeah, looks fine to me. I mean, the R is a little bit bigger, but these are getting better. Oh, one last thing. Let's check out, or let's install these things. Come on. I swear it won't come out of the back. I don't know what's going on. There we go. It's not even sticky. It just won't come out of the back. There we go. All right, so yeah, just let's, uh, let's try the glow in the dark, yeah? You see with the UV light, stuff really fluoresces. The shell itself is supposed to be glow in the dark as well. So I'll just leave that there for a minute while I, uh, while I talk. And then we'll take a look. Um, so yeah, these are the new IPS ready Game Boy Advance SP shells. Seem perfectly fine to me. It feels great. Um, I like the OEM button membranes more than the button membranes that it comes with. But I mean, they're certainly serviceable. And uh, one of the cool things is they are glow in the dark. This shell, yes, I can see that it's glow in the dark, but it is not doing a very good job of that um, but I mean I guess if you want to get a shell you don't want to have to bother trimming for the IPS screen then yeah these are pretty good options um, so yeah I, I, I just want to thank Retro Game Repair Shop for sending me a couple of these shells to check out uh, they're pretty cool the uh, I'm definitely underwhelmed by the amount of glow-in-the-dark of the shell itself this blue color is supposed to be glow in the dark and I can tell that it is it's just it's just not it's not so great kill that get more out of 
to go get those lights. Um, so, I mean, it is. I don't know. I Maybe I have unreasonable expectations. But, I mean, you can see it is glowing. Just the uh, button membranes seem to glow more than the rest of the shell, but it's still cool. I don't know. Don't get me wrong. I'm all for gimmicky shit like this. I love it. I can't get enough of it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Ooh, throwing it everywhere. So yeah, thanks again to uh, Retro Game Repair Shop for sending me these shells to check out. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description uh, if you guys want to get one for yourself. They're priced fairly. I mean, they're basically the same price as the other shells. If you're just reshelling an existing console, it's probably best to stick with the original style. But that's... It. I mean, if you have spacers to prevent the uh, bottom corner from falling into the shell, then by all means go for these. Um, only time will tell. I am very eager to see how these hold up to cracking, because like I mentioned earlier, these old ones seem to have a uh, seem to have a real issue with it. Um, but allegedly these new ones are quite a bit better and don't have to worry about that, but who knows? I don't have any cracks yet, but I will uh, update you guys as I know more. Otherwise, I like these shells. Yeah, sorry. I, I mean, at this point, I'm just rambling. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night. Quick addendum. I didn't realize how bad these were until I was getting ready to clean up for my next video here. These screws, I stripped out these two screws just from screwing them in. Um, I mean, not fully. This one is way worse than this one. But I have the right size bit. It fits perfectly fine. But these screws are just, they're, um, they're something else. Uh, so use your original screws. Don't bother with the garbage that these shells come with. Um, you are in for a bad time, especially if you're not using the the correct screwdriver like if you're using one of those little red ones that it comes with oh boy you're in for some fun with that one uh, but yeah use your original screws not the garbage it comes with